So to deal with more advanced rule objects, I've created a coupon uh, model, a coupon migration, and essentially just created a really simple test coupon in the database. And this has an ends at column. Uh, if you do want to follow along, let's just open up the coupon model here. Uh, and you can see that we get this has expired uh, method as well, which allows us to check if the ends at is um, less than the current date. And of course, if it's null, we just return false. So really, really simple. I've also updated the form here to give our coupon and that uh, allows us to just submit that coupon. It doesn't do anything at the moment because what I have done is cleared out the validation rules from earlier. So we're going to go ahead and start things off immediately with a rule object. So go ahead and create a rule in here and we're going to say valid coupon. So this is going to check everything. You might have different rules for different scenarios with your coupon, but uh, you know, because we're working with rule objects, we can keep these nice and tidy now, they're individual classes. So let's go ahead and validate this. So let's say this validate, much like we would do with the password example we've seen. Uh, we want this to be uh, required. So let's first of all define out the attribute and let's say required and let's say new valid coupon. We're going to explore a couple of ways that we can validate this coupon. So let's go ahead and type in a um, any coupon here and you can see we get the validation error message. That's just because we are returning null from here, which is causing that to fail. And we're seeing the validation error message. Now, what I kind of want to get across here is that we have two different scenarios. The first one is the coupon doesn't exist. And the second one is the coupon has expired. Both require two different messages. Now, like I said, you could create two different rules for this. That's absolutely fine. But I prefer to put all of these in one place just so I can see each of the checks that I am performing really, really easily inside of one rule. And then that can apply to everything. But you could refactor this out to multiple. But uh, the idea here is that we want a dynamic validation error message. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing is, how do we get this coupon? There's a couple of ways that we could do this. We could go ahead and look the coupon up here and pass it in as a um, uh, dependency, which would work. Or we could just call this, grab the model in here, and then return the model back afterwards. So we'll look at both methods and you can decide what you prefer. So let's go ahead and define out a coupon uh, variable here and we'll just say where code is request coupon and we'll say first. Now the reason I'm not a massive fan of this method is because when we pass the coupon into here this could potentially be null. What we're doing is the, the validation should do all of this model looking up for us. It should do all the database work for us. We shouldn't have to fetch this and then you know, maybe do another check inside of here. So we wouldn't want to say if not coupon, we want the validation to be nicely tucked away. So we'll refactor this in just a minute, but we'll leave it as it is for now. What we can do now though, is accept this coupon in as a dependency. We can't type in ticks. It could potentially be null. In fact, we can type in it, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we'll say this coupon equals coupon. And of course, go ahead and define the property out here like so. Okay. So if uh, to pass this, what do we need to do? Well, first thing is, if not this coupon, like so, then we want to fail this. So let's just uh, return false for now. And then let's do another check in here. I'll just copy this if statement just down here real quick. And we're going to say if uh, this coupon has expired, like so, then we want to return false. Otherwise, we want to return true. So this is nice defensive programming. We're checking each uh, scenario that this could fail. But then finally, we're just saying, well, this coupon is valid. And of course, here we need to implement a generic error. So the coupon is not valid. Now, that doesn't really tell us anything. It doesn't tell us whether it's expired or it can't be found. So let's go over and just type in anything. Coupon is not valid. I'm going to type in test. The coupon is not valid. And that is because over in the database, it ends uh, well, it's already expired. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to say the 30th and let's go back over and try and use that test coupon and we get a pass. 
So the question now is how do we change this message around? Well, we're in a class so we can do whatever we want. We could go ahead and set the message up here and then we could set the message here every single time. So we could say this message equals coupon not found. And then for this, we could say coupon has expired. And let's just finish them lined off. And then of course here we can return this message pretty straightforward and if we come over and let's go ahead and invalidate it first of all so let's say the 11th of the 11th and we'll come over and type in test coupon is expired ABC coupon not found so now we have custom messages for each kind of thing that might go wrong inside of our rule now one thing I do sometimes do and this is really just kind of nitpicking you could go ahead and create a failed method that handles the setting of the message. It's not the end of the world if you don't do this, but it might just make your code look that a little bit nicer. So you could accept the message in here and do pretty much exactly this, but now just call one method in here and you could return this fail and then type in the message. So you could say coupon not found in there and then that would be set to the message. So really unnecessary refactoring, but depending on how much you have going on in here, this might just tidy things up. So coupon has expired and you've just saved yourself a couple of lines by extracting this out basically. And of course that still works and test still is expired. So what we can now do is inside of this status, we can say something like coupon X has been applied to your account. And of course we could switch X out for the coupon uh, code because we know that that exists now. So let's just add in a couple of double quotes in there. And let's just type in, if we unexpire this, let's just type in test. There we go. So coupon test has been applied to your account. Now this is fine because this validation rule now uh, tells us that this is first of all available and second of all can be used so we can now start to use it down here but like I said I like to have each validation rule do all of the database stuff for me it's great to pass this in as a dependency but if it's potentially a null value then you know it doesn't sit right with me now there's a couple of things that we could do you could say coupon you could type hint it but you could use a question mark beforehand to say that this may not be a coupon and this will work in exactly the same way. So if I now type in a coupon that doesn't exist, we still get coupon not found. That's a still passed a null value into there. That's just a PHP feature uh, that you may or may not be aware of. And uh, the reason that we get this error is I've not imported the coupon class and let's just make sure that's pulled in properly. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and work now and say that it worked. So you could do that. You could say, well, this needs to be either a coupon or it needs to be null. Or what you could do is you could get rid of this altogether, get rid of the constructor altogether. And I'm not saying one way is better than another. It's just personal preference. You could do the looking up of your model inside of here. So let's get rid of the coupon there and let's do this inside of here. Or you could extract this out to another method. It doesn't really matter. So here now we just need to take the value. So we don't need request coupon because that is given to us in this value. And now we've got the coupon in there. Uh, we could even set this to this coupon and that would just continue to work. So let's head over and say uh, ABC coupon not found test and that works. However, we now don't have the coupon available inside of here. What do we do? what you could do is you could say something like coupon and assign this to valid coupon and then you could create a method in here to get the model and I've done this before and it works great in some circumstances but like I said it's just personal preference so you could say well now I want to extract the model that's been used for this validation rule because we don't want to do this again inside of the controller look it up again inside of the controller or we're going to end up uh, with two database calls that we don't really need. So I think this solution is quite neat. We do the validation, it's nicely tucked away, we don't need to pass anything in, we just depend on the data that we get through from the request, but then we can ask for the model to be pulled out of this rule. So let's go over and just test this out again, give this a refresh and uh, undefined property, validate valid coupon code, let's just have a look. 
Oh, of course, so we actually need to extract this out. So now what we can say is something like coupon, and we can overwrite that and say coupon get model. So we get the model after we've done the validation, and that works in exactly the same way. And the validation works in exactly the same way. So this was quite long, but hopefully that's given you a kind of insight into the ways that you can use rule objects. You can either take the dependency and pass it into the rule, or you can do all of the database looking up inside of the rule and then use this to extract the model once the uh, validation has passed successfully. So now that we've covered all of that, we're gonna go over to look at form requests, which is a beautiful way to tidy up your code. And it's, uh, I love absolutely love form requests, but how are we gonna do all of this when we're taking our validation and taking it out of our controller? Well, again, we're gonna look at some of the strategies that we can use to do this and keep things nice and tidy.